This is exactly the kind of inverter upgrade that I needed. Let's talk about it. What up, I'm Ive, this is Ask Ive Solar, where I like to give you practical takes on these products, use them in real life, and tell you what I take away from it. This is a 2000 watt, 12 volt inverter from Bouge RV, and it has some pretty cool features. And this is my first big inverter, so I have some questions. I've been struggling and limping along with some smaller inverters, but this is the upgrade that I actually needed. And I'm thankful to Bouge RV for sending it out. Now I must admit, I'm not a DIY guy, but I have a ton of batteries laying around here. And I do use inverters with my batteries. I also use battery chargers with my batteries but I don't have much experience to kind of compare this to. I can only go off of the features that this one has, and it has some good ones. First of all, it has Bluetooth connectivity, which is dope. It has two AC outlets on the Joker. One is 15 amp, one is 20 amp, as you can see with the difference in the plug. It is 2000 watts, so um, I did see a channel tested its off-grid basement, um, a channel that I've interacted with in the past. Not a whole lot, but we run in the same kind of whatever and he wasn't able to get it to get up to 2000 watts it was sitting at right about 1900 and some change so i do want to look into that to see if i could get it there if i could get it close i'll try and figure that out later in the video on the device itself it has an on off switch obviously it also has a usb port i guess <laughs> it's always interesting to see usb ports on these devices because they're taking dc to ac to dc again I don't know if it actually does that. That's just my understanding. Maybe it's just DC to DC on the USB port. I have no way of knowing that though, but it's always interesting. It also has, a, I guess, an AC, a direct wire block to be able to wire up your own panel and outlets, which I think is really cool. I don't think I would ever do that, but you could do it if you wanted to. It includes the cables that you need. It also has a remote control that you can hook up via this wire right here. The wire is pretty long. I'll put how long it is down here. I don't actually know. I don't know if I plan to use it. I don't have a practical application of that. If I'm going down to look at my batteries, I'm just going to go and look at the batteries. I may have the remote right on top of it so I can grab the remote pick it up and look at it and do things instead of kind of like looking down at the inverter itself. You can turn it on and off and you can kind of see the voltage and certain information you see on the screen, which you can see right here. There's also a backlight button, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess you could turn the light off if you didn't want to drain in the battery. So I get it, it makes sense. This is my first battery. I'm figuring all of this out and you're figuring it out with me. It does have a metal kind of construction it feels tough it feels sturdy you know it's a good build quality very good build quality from what i can tell just by looking at it the leads on it have these little protective covers on it i guess to stop you from being able to inadvertently touch them because they're so close together is what i would deduce but it's nice that the leads are not just out there open for something to fall on them it also has these little grill holes in the front and then it has two uh, fans in the back off-grid basement did pull his apart and he showed that the fans were kind of properly aligned with the heat sinks that are in opposite side of the device. It also has a couple mounting kind of, not holes, but slots, four on each side where you could, you know, screw this down to some boards if you were into that kind of thing. I doubt it's something that I would do, but it's there if you need it. So a couple things that I want to get into, I have a few questions about this being that it is my first large inverter. One, I want to see if it will give me 120 volts. I'll talk about that in a second. Two, I want to be able to see if you can hook it up to a 100 amp hour battery. Some people have talked about the fact that you can. It doesn't get mentioned a lot. Maybe it's common knowledge, but these batteries work in such a, these inverters work in such a way that in order to be able to get the full power, you have to have the amp hours to pull against. I happen to have a 200 amp hour battery, which will give me the ability to pull the 2000 watt hours. Technically, it would give me the ability to pull like 2500 watt hours. I'm sorry, watts. But I want to hook it up to a 100 amp hour battery with a 100 amp hour BMS to see if it can pull a thousand. Because 12.6 or I think it's 12.7. No, it's 12.8. 12 12.8 12 times 100 amp hours gives you 1280 watt hours so with the bms being rated for the 100 amp hours it can pull up to 1280 watts now i'm not saying you should do that all the time uh, i'm not even saying you should do the 2000 all the time but i want to see if it's capable of doing it and also can it do 
a 100 amp hour battery and a 200 amp hour battery. I feel like I made that as clear as mud. Not mud, it's clear, right? And lastly, the inverter also unlocks something for me that I have been dealing with as it relates to limitations of my power stations. I'm in the process of hooking the battery up. I'm gonna try my resistors. So I'm charging, I'm trying to pre-charge the capacitors or resistors or something. So I'm holding this here and I'm gonna come to maybe like 10 or 15. It's been going already, but it did not work on my other situation. So I'm trying to minimize the spark here. And I did hear something when I connected it. So I'm just kind of talking through it. Hopefully it doesn't spark, but it might. All right, let's see if it sparks. <laughs> I did not. Nice. So I tightened this black one and then I put the cover on it so I didn't have any issues with the wrench kind of touching that. And now I'm going to tighten this one. I got it all connected up. I have not put the cap on this one, but I also plugged the screen in and the screen is telling me it's 120 volts. It's a little bit interesting. I mean, you can see it clearly. You have power, you have the ability to change it from 110 to 120, and then you could turn the display off. One thing I'm not a fine, not fond of is this, that beep. <laughs> I wish you could turn that off. Oh, that's annoying. It's saying 13.2 volts on the battery. Uh, you can see the voltage is building now, which is interesting. 118. Now the battery that I'm using does have a display and you can see that it's saying that it is 13.10 volts and no current coming out of it. So this, uh, this thing is using so little power that it's not even registering on here. Now I haven't plugged anything in yet. That could be different once it starts to power something and then it the AC inverter is now active. Maybe it's in some type of like standby or sleep mode because it's not powering anything. Okay, it is the next day. I'm picking up where I left off. I basically have my inverter connected, wired up. I got a bunch of things here. I got a little heater, I got a power station, and I got another little heater, which should be about 1500 watts. That one should actually get me close to what I wanna do in terms of getting close to the 2000 watt hours. It has three settings. So one, two, and three. I imagine one will probably be about 750. I don't know. Let's find out. I'm gonna turn it on. Stupid beep, 13.1. Look at how low that voltage started out. Actually, I have this plugged in too for monitoring power usage. Let's see what it says. 119 volts, 119 volts, 119.5. So it's very similar. I have a big gauge cable on the 20 amp plug and then I have this little, you know, four-way testing power strip for some of my smaller things. What is output? Output is giving me watts. Oh, fancy, 700. Let's bump it up. Number two. I never thought it would give me watt output, guys. I'm shocked. Okay, this is the fan. Using about 960. The voltage on here has dropped to 116, interesting. But this one is still showing it at 120. Swing over and check the battery. It says it's using 90 amps times 12.76 voltage. It does not show me the watts. So, you know, I'm not gonna math. Well, you know, 10 times 90 is 100. I mean 900, so you add another 90 that's 990 at another 90 that's 1070 1080 so efficiency loss there which is understandable all right let's take this up to the next level we go into three got us up to 12 13 13 4 that fan is not bad i mean it's loud but it's soft all right let's plug in this other heater and we're gonna pop that into here voltage is it just did 114 it was at 118 for a second 115, 116, so it's kind of bouncing. Let's see how much power we're using. We got 1951 at the watt output. Let's check this one if we can. It's using five amps, low, high, current is 596. So we got about 2000 watts. So this is why I bought the power station. So let's grab a USB-C cable 
and let's get add another 60 to it have a little more granular of of jump 1986 2000 2010 this is getting 60 watts in that's working just fine check the voltage 117 using 2000 watts all right so this is going to give me another 60 so that will get me up to the voltage on my battery is pretty low 2084 so it's doing more than 2000 watts what we have over here on the battery amp says 214 interesting that's pretty high right but it makes sense you know it's a 200 amp bms at about 2000 watts so that math makes sense actually now earlier in the video i talked about how the watt draw was so low on standby let's see if it's still very low on standby because there's some power coming through this now we'll see if the battery is registering any current and it's not so it's less than something off grid basement said that uh he saw like 0.5 watts 0.5 amps so i'm this battery's registering nothing he actually put a clamp meter on his i could kind of do that let's do that All right you can see that the dip is still on and i'm gonna grab it over here and let's put it on the positive so it's showing very similar to what he was saying so a little over half an amp 0.7 amps so the next question is can we hook this up to a 100 amp hour battery and be able to use about 1200 watts so we're going to loosen this up and then get it strapped in all right 100 amp hour battery connected let's turn this on it turned on it's reading voltage my voltage is going up on the right side 118 13.4 volts i need to get up to 1200 watts let's try and do a thousand oh check this one out this one is actually registering the 0.5 and showing that it's using about six or seven watts all right let's adjust the heater to the second joint turn it on it's not having a problem there we go we got about 960 voltage has dropped to 115 116 let's let this even out 970 and then we could easily add another 120 to this real quick by charging that. So we'll do that. 118, 1069. So you can use a 100 amp hour battery with this joint. No problem. You just can't exceed the power output. This one is a little higher. So going about 1280, 1284, 1270. And then that particular number is right on the button. And that one's getting out 1100. So there's a difference between obviously how much you pull in from the battery and how much you're using at the inverter because what this, do, what this is doing is boosting from 12 volts to 120 volts. I just turned the heater off. You can hear that the fan is still running. It's only using about 100 and 20 watts so then the fan turns off i wanted to see how long it was going to take for this inverter's fan to turn off and it took like maybe about 30 seconds so let's go ahead and turn this off and then we'll see if this is still using standby power and it is not so we're learning so much here how this helps me out in my situation is it gives me another 120 volt output source I only have one and that's one of my power stations. So now when I power my house from my mill to mill AC cables, I can have two 120s going to each leg of my side so I don't have to make any compromises. And this bad, this inverter combined with this 3000 milliamp hour, milliamp hour, <laughs> this 3000 watt hour, like 3500, uh, about 3000 when you uh, account for the inversion, uh, conversion, it's going to give me my largest battery capacity that I have on the channel. Now the question is, how do I charge it? I have an AC charger that can charge it up to 300 watts, 297, 290, something like that. So that's easy. But I also have a MPPT charge controller that I can entertain. But I haven't gone into those waters of trying to figure out how to configure it. All my questions were answered. What questions do you have? Check out this video, like this one, and subscribe if you're not subscribed because why not, right? I guess. Whatever. Just watch the videos.